So what do you think? Do we live in a free republic? Do we have representative government? Do we have the rule of law? Another question to ask. I am going to probably settle on the negative, or as the English used to say, the answer is in the negative. But before I do, I want to I want to tell you what I'm after here. I'm after your safety. I'm after your safety and the safety of your family on two levels. One is spiritual regarding the divine, perhaps divine judgment. And the second is in the natural. And both require a proper formation of our mind, of our thinking, and the ability to see things as they are, not as they were, and not as we wish they would be, but as they are. Patrick Henry made history with his give me liberty or give me death speech, but he was going against the tide and against some very well-respected men in St. John's Church there in Richmond when he made that speech. But he had the courage to speak with clarity and to assess what was going on around him accurately. And there are historians who say if it had not been for that one speech, it is possible that America would, would have been defeated because the one speech is what caused Virginia to declare war, the rump parliament of Virginia. So seeing, feeling, assessing what is going on accurately is critical in the natural, but also in the spiritual. There are many of us who are familiar with passages in the Bible that speak of the joy of the Lord and God's desire for us to have joy and for Him wanting us to have peace. And those passages are all true. But part of our duty both in the natural and the spiritual, is to rightly divide the word of truth. Did you know that there was a group of people in the Bible who were spared the judgment of God specifically because they sighed, they grieved, they mourned? If you're not familiar with the passage, it's Ezekiel chapter 9. Let's take a quick look at it together. Then he cried in my ears with a loud voice, saying, Draw near, you executioners of the city, each with his destroying weapon in his hand. And lo, six men came from the direction of the upper gate, which faces north, every man with his weapon for slaughter in his hand. And with them was a man clothed in linen, with a writing case at his side. And they went in and stood before the bronze altar. Now the glory of the God of Israel had gone up from the cherubim on which it had rested to the threshold of the house. So God's glory is leaving, okay? And he called to the men clothed in linen. This is a vision Ezekiel's having, and there's angels here. He called to the men clothed in linen who had the writing case who, at his side, and the Lord said to him, Go through the city, through Jerusalem, and put a mark on the foreheads of the men who sigh and groan over all the abominations that are committed in it. The NIV translates it, Put a mark on the foreheads of those who grieve and lament over all the detestable things that are done in it. Do you grieve? Do you groan? Do you lament? Do you sigh and cry, one translation puts it? Do you shed tears over the detestable abominations that are done in America? If so, it may end up saving you. I mean, that is, if this passage in any manner, shape, or form replicates or duplicates itself in American history. Because look at what it says. And to the others he said in my hearing, pass through the city after him and smite. Your eye shall not spare. You shall show no pity. Slay. That means kill old men outright, young men and maidens, little children and women, but do not touch one upon whom is the mark. And begin at my sanctuary. So they began with the elders who were before the house. And goes on to show that these angels in his vision went, starting with the elders in the house of God. That's why Peter said judgment will begin in the house of God. He was referring back to Ezekiel 9. He, he said that God sent these destroyers to kill everyone who did not grieve and mourn 
and wail and sigh. So if you are grieved for the state of America, God bless you. And if you're talking to your fellow Christians and they're like, ah, it's no big deal. We'll just pray. We'll just trust the Lord. It's a sign that the Lord is coming back. Hey, you want to go to a barbecue? If there's nothing in them that resonates and they look at you like you're messed up because you're grieving the state of our nation, trust me, they are the ones that are in peril. Not you. They're the ones that are completely out of step with the Lord our God because if they saw things as they are, okay, and if they could feel the grief of heaven, they too would grieve. In James chapter 4, in fact, I'll give you this verse and then we'll come back from a break. He said, um, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you men of double mind. Be wretched. Another version says, be afflicted, mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to dejection. Humble yourselves before the Lord and he will exalt you. A lot of us want to be exalted by the Lord. We want to have this great victory in America. We want to restore the Republic, but we don't want to pay the price of admission. We don't want to go on the path that Almighty God has designated. Okay? It's a path of conflict. It's a path of rejection. It's a path of us picking up our cross, dying to ourselves and following Christ. It's a path of us grieving and mourning and weeping and begging God for mercy in the midst of His judgment. If you want to be a part of the restoration and reformation of this country, you have to do it on God's terms. And if you do grieve and you do mourn, God bless you. You're on a safer path than those who are deluded and asleep because of bread and circuses. When we come back from this break, we'll discuss why we are in fact not a free people, but we are living under the heel of judicial tyranny, far worse than anything the American colonists suffered during the reign of King George III.